guys, this is Chris, Angry American here with Survival Dispatch today, and we got a couple of really cool guys with us. Joel Graves from American Survival Co. is out here with us today, along with Matt. Um, Tate is out here with us. Um, and we just want to take a few minutes, shoot a couple interesting videos, stuff you don't typically get from us, because Joel really is a subject matter expert when it comes to plants. I mean, he's going to deny it, but the guy is brilliant because he remembers all the Latin names, and I don't even try to pretend I do. <laughs> so we want to talk about one here, especially you guys in Florida and the Southeast. You see this thing everywhere and everybody hates it. Um, Spanish needles is one of the names. It's got a few others. What's the, what's the Latin on this one? Biden's alba is what we call Biden's it. Biden's alba. So um, this is a, a weed that grows in disturbed areas in particular. It loves that kind of stuff. And it's prolific. Once it yeah. gets going, it's, it's really hard to get rid of. And I cut one off for the seed head. If, if we can get a little look at that. This isn't a good example of the seed head, but these are the little, um, what are they, off? Devil's Fork, I think is another name for it, yeah. because these things will hang on your clothes, and that's what everybody hates about it. Get stuck in your socks, that kind of thing. But this is a pot herb, right? Yeah. So the greens are good to eat. You can eat it raw, cooked. Yep. Uh, the whole plant, too. I don't yeah. know about the root, but I know the stems, leaves. I, I've never messed with the root. Yeah. I'll use the root for medicine purposes, right. but as far as what we want to eat is just like going to the grocery store. We want like meristematic growth is what we call it. It's like stretchy, yep. new, tender, tender growth. Yeah. And that's so what you're Closer to the for. tips, you know. Yeah. So it makes a good herb. And medicinally, what's this? Because this makes a great tea medicinally. Yeah. That's very good for you. Yeah, and it's actually pretty potent. One thing that's unique about this particular herb is it's more potent used fresh. If, if you do this like the typical way where you collect herbs and dry them and store them for later use it loses like 50 percent of its potency really? and that's across the board there's actually a lot of medical research on this not from america of but course other, not no. other countries big that, pharma doesn't like people yeah. knowing how to cure things so. but uh so just the tea alone is, is pretty powerful medicine and it's basically a, a systemic antibiotic really yeah uh there's a really great book by I believe the author is Stephen Buhner, and it's it's herbal antibiotics, and he talks about a lot of this plant's cousins, and there, that's there's a lot of research on it, um, and when you see a lot of the American studies on it, they do a uh, ethanol extract, like basically like a tincture. Tinctures, yeah. And but they'll use dried herb, and you'll see it have less efficiency. Yeah. Um, one of my good herbalist friends, this is like her go-to for everything. Definitely one of her top five medicinals, like. Puts it if her kids have ear aches. Really? Um, tincture wise, she does that? Or yep. Using, tinctures, teas. Using an alcohol like ethanol or oil? She'll do, she'll do it in oil for the ear for drops okay. and, and a little right. bit of garlic. Yep. Uh, but as far as um, kind of like, it's my favorite because of that fact that if you use it fresh, it's very potent. Right. Obviously, the ethanol extract is a lot more potent because you can basically fit a lot more right. chemicals into that mix but just the tea so it is is pretty potent so right. in a bushcraft essence it's it's great medicine it's something great to know about but typically what i'm using it for if i'm using it medicinally is um any kind of like if i'm having a cold or it's a great uh what we call a mucosal vulnerary it helps healing with all that right. so for sore throats things like that and with any plant medicine you try to get it on the affected area right. So if I'm using it for a sore throat, I'm going to have a spray gargle, tincture spray, yeah. or gargle it yeah. and try to get it there. And it, it works great for that. It's very anti-inflammatory. It can break fevers. They've tested it, uh, and it's had very similar effects to uh, Tylenol. Really? Yeah. And, and the beautiful thing about this is it's, it's a medicine and a food. This is something that grows everywhere. Um, it's it's a, considered an annoyance to a lot of people. But you know, here at Survival Dispatch, we talk about, and, and these guys with American Survival Code the same way. Survival, you know, if you're looking at long-term survival, you need to have a sustainable system. Well, foraging is one of those things. You can only store so many beans and rice yeah. and cans of food. Yep. This stuff is gonna grow every day, no matter what. And if everybody in Florida started eating it today, we would never run out of it because <laughs> it's everywhere. It, it's a big uh, honeybee, Crop. Oh yeah, it's a great honeybee this crop. This is yeah. literally, it's what I tell people that are getting into wild edibles is, is like, you don't need to know that this is called Biden's Alba. It's a lot like recognizing a face. And now just from watching this video, you'll start to see this everywhere. It's literally everywhere. It, it and, is. And, everywhere. and it's all around us. It's in the middle of the forest right it's now. A, yeah, roadsides, I, I see it in the suburbs. Disturbed fields. It's, yeah. It's all over the place. 
but just like with any wild edible you want to have a 100 percent id before you go ingest into all this stuff and so there's only so much you can learn from a video it's in my opinion best to get a boots on the ground approach to yeah to the, learn wild see, the thing with videos and books what's, what's always bothered me because i've studied this stuff not nearly as well as you have but in a photo you've got a picture of it in one phase of its growing yeah, yeah. span growth span What's it look like in the winter? What's it look like in the first year? What's it look like in the second year? What's yeah. it look like, you know? And, exactly. and all this stuff matters too. And for a lot of these, you gotta catch it before it flowers or after it flowers or in different stages of life. So if you want classes on survival, on, on medicinal and wild edibles, find a local expert to your region because you have different plants than we do down here right now. But if you're in the Southeast, you want it, American Survival Co. Um, and Alan K, both of those guys, I highly recommend them. He would recommend these guys in a heartbeat. But get out and learn this stuff because knowledge is the one resource you can't lose. You know, I mean, it's not like our knives. We yeah. come out here in the woods and lose them. I mean, you you can, it can atrophy if it's not exercised, but you don't lose it. So, the other cool thing about plants is they don't run away from you. You know, easy to catch. And even if you can live off of this, you know, nutritionally, it's it's touted as having like twice the nutrition of spinach. So if you really? feel healthy after eating a bunch of spinach, you know, give this a try. It's as far as wild edibles go, it's very mild tasting. Yeah. There's some, like if you've ever had wild lettuce, like I barely consider that an edible because it's, it's bitter so bitter. As hell, yeah. It, it, you know, you got to cook it up to kind of make it taste yeah. better, but this is not on that plane. And then it's, too, you, which I don't see any right here. I'm just gonna look real quick, but where this grows, you don't have to look hard generally to find either wood sorrel or sheep sorrel. Yeah. Um, now that is a lemony kind of tasting um, pot herb, which you throw that in there with this, you cook that up. Yeah. Now you just added something to it, you know. So you eat this stuff, but then that water you boiled it in, like you just said, that's a perfect tea. Drink that down. That's a good tonic, you know. That's uh, again Latin name. Biden's alba. Biden's alba or Spanish needles is one of the names. So um, grows everywhere. We just want to show you guys. We're going to pick a few more cool ones out here today too, but that's one of them. <laughs>